Today, we will be going through the procedure on how to commission a motor-mounted Nordex Start SK-135E soft starter. If you have questions about this procedure or are uncertain about any detail, seek clarification and do not proceed. For written information about the installation and commissioning of the SK-135E, reference to the SK-135E operational manual available in the documentation section of Nord.com. For this procedure, you will need a 4mm hex T-handle, a Phillips head screwdriver, an awl, and a small and large flat blade screwdriver. First, verify that the product you are working with is indeed the SK-135E. This will be listed as the type number on the sticker on the top of the motor control cap. In this example, the SK-135E has a max input current of 7.5 amps. Verify the current of the motor falls within the range listed on the SK-135E. Once you've confirmed that the SK-135E is sized properly for the motor, use a 4mm hex T-handle to loosen the four bolts to remove the cap. The bolts are captive so they will not fully remove from the cap. At no time should power be applied when the cover of the motor controller is off. The SK-135E requires 24 volts to operate. In this example, we have the 24 volt power supply module provided by Nord. You may or may not have ordered this feature. If not, an externally sourced 24 volt power supply is required. We will temporarily remove the 24 volt power supply module for easy access to the wiring during the commissioning process. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the two bolts on the power supply. You can keep all wires attached and set the power supply off to the side. This will reveal the motor terminal connections. It is good practice to verify the motor is configured for the correct voltage. In this case, the motor is configured for 460 volt operation. It is standard for Nord to wire motors for 460 volts, and this will be the case unless you specify you'd like the motor wired differently. Another common voltage is 230 volt, which would look like this. Terminals U, V, and W are where the motor output power connections are made. There will be three wires already connected to these terminals. The white wire connects to T1, red to T2, and black to T3. Terminals L1, L2, and L3 are the input line power. This is where you connect your three-phase line power. In our example, we're connecting 460 volt three-phase line power. If you order the Nord 24 volt power supply, you will see a brown and black wire. These are supplied and pre-wired from the factory and supply the AC power to the 24 volt power supply. Remember, ordering the 24 volts power supply from Nord is optional although the SK-135E does require some sort of 24 volt power supply to operate. On the side of the motor control, you will have a 3 quarter inch NPT adapter. You will need to install your own cord grip to the NPT adapter. In this example, we are using an elbow cord grip. If you have a cable grip with metric threads, you can remove the NPT adapter and attach your cable grip directly. Once the cable grip is installed, pull the power wires through the cable grip into the motor control box. The first thing you want to do is connect the ground wire to one of the two grounding clamps underneath the grounding saddle. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, place the ground wire under the grounding saddle and tighten the screw. Tug the wire to ensure it is secure. Using your flathead screwdriver, land the white, red, and black wires to terminals L1, L2, and L3. If you have the Nord supplied 24 volt power supply, you will have to double up the wires on L1 and L2. It's always good practice to give the wires a tug to ensure they are firmly in place. Pay extra attention to L1 and L2 as you need to ensure the black and brown wires from the Nord supplied 24 volt power supply remain connected when you land the power supply wires to these terminals. Phase sequence is important. The motor starter will simply apply the power to the motor. The direction the motor turns is dependent on the phase sequence. If you don't know your phase sequence and you start the motor and it is running in the reverse direction, you will need to swap two of the phases on L1 and L2. In this example, we know L1 is our white wire, L2 is our red wire, and L3 is our black wire. Okay. If you are connecting your own 24 volt power, the positive leads should connect to any terminal 44 and the return or common supply should connect to any terminal 40. 
The terminals are labeled with what their function are. The 24 volt power supply, the 24 volt ground or common, two digital inputs, one for enable forward and one for enable reverse, and digital outputs that provide feedback. We also have motor temperature sensor inputs. If your motor does not have a temperature sensor, it will be supplied with a small jumper connecting terminals 38 and 39. If this jumper is removed, the SK135E thinks it has a motor overheat issue and will not run. Here we also have wires for a left, right, off switch. This is an optional switch that allows for a manual enable forward and a manual enable reverse. If you're providing your own switch, you can connect to a remote control box or a PLC with 24 volt output, or you can order a switch like the one we're using today from Nord. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, reinstall the control power supply on the two standoffs inside the box. Tuck in all of the wires to ensure nothing will be pinched when the cover is reinstalled. The SK135E can be configured with simple potentiometers and dip switch settings. In a motor mounted SK135E, as a default, the P1 potentiometer will be set to match the motor current. You can verify this setting by checking the motor current from the motor nameplate. Using a flathead screwdriver, adjust the dial so the arrow points to the desired value. P2 is for the inhibit time. This is the amount of time that the starter has to wait in between when it last stopped to when it can start again. By default, this will be set to zero. P3 is the starting torque. This allows for a voltage or torque boost during startup for a brief amount of time. This is ideal for applications with higher breakaway torque requirements to get the load moving. The performance of this setting is highly based on the load of the application. These values are in percentage. P4 is for ramp time. The ramp time is the amount of time it will take for the voltage to ramp up from zero volts to the AC line supply volts. This is not a direct relation to the amount of time it takes to get from zero speed to full speed as that is dependent on the load. By default, this is set to the off position, which means the motor will have no ramp time or soft start. Just the slip of the motor will determine what the acceleration of the motor will be. You can also choose to commission the SK135E by selecting from various dip switch settings. Based on your desired outcome, reference the dip switch functions table of the SK135E operation manual. The dip switches will arrive from the factory in the off position, which is down. To flip a dip switch on, simply lift the switch up. Since we've already configured the potentiometers, we'll leave all the dip switches off in this example. When commissioning is complete, reattach the motor controls cover by using a 4mm hex T handle. It's important to put the cover on in the correct position so the plugs line up with the access port communications. Turn on the line power. The motor mounted SK135E is now ready to run. Through the view plugs, you can see a green light flashing when power is applied. When the motor is turned on, in either forward or reverse rotation, the light will change to solid green. The light will flash again once the motor is turned off. If there is a fault or warning, the light will flash red. For more information, please reference the SK-135E operational manual available online at Nord.com.